What's up everyone, welcome to another video. You guys are always asking me how to defend cheeses, how to defend Protoss cheeses in particular. And I've accidentally stumbled across the perfect guide, Clem against Zaun from the Global Finals. Clem gets cheese twice and holds it off with ease, perfect follow-ups and all that. And now basically Clem is going to take over Terran School for an episode, show you guys how to do it. He's going to defend Proxy Gate to be exact. I I'm not sure if it's twice the same build, I, I was looking over the replays pretty fast to see which games would be fun for the YouTube channel. And I did notice that Zaun was a very cheesy Protoss player in this series. Now I'll be doing a mix of just observing and watching it from Clem's POV. I always really like to see how exactly they react to the things. Obviously Clem is a very fast player so if you stay on his POV for too long it can be a little bit dizzy making so I'll be trying to make sure to not let you guys get too dizzy at least. <laughs> so as you can see here Zaun is actually going for the standard proxy gate. One at home. One proxy, the Cybercore after. Could go for either Zealots or Stalkers, I think. And Clem is going to go for a very standard Scout here. Actually going to go for a Marine first. Oh, wow. Did you guys see that Scout by Clem? That was actually kind of insane. He didn't read into it, but he moved his SUV as far as he could. Um, you know, before running out of minerals, running out of time to make that command center. And he saw the probe come from an off angle. That was actually an insane scout by Clem there. He's, he scouted the proxy gate, I believe. And now I want to see what he does after that. First of all, he made a second marine. And then he's going to make a third marine. Okay, interesting. I think the worst thing you can usually do, by the way, is actually make that reactor. So Clem is actually going to hunt for this gateway. This seems a little bit questionable. Yeah, he does decide to go back in the end. Because, yeah, one stalker does kind of dunk on two marines. He's going to start a bunker at the front. Keep in mind with three uh, marines you can buy enough time for anything. Starts a factory and then he starts a tech lab at the same time. Now if we look at Clem's SCV scout on the other side. The most important thing he could see was the nexus here. Because what that means um, is that it's not a proxy target follow up or anything like that. Proxy robo, DTs, whatever right. Because Protoss players do tend to follow up these cheesy builds with even more cheese. And this is what I thought was super interesting about Clem's hold. He actually goes for the Marauder with the Concussor Shells after this. And this is a concept I talked about a while ago. Um, where instead of making more Marines, just actually getting that fast Marauder out. Because Marauders are so much better against Stalkers than Marines. Like Marines without Stimmet Combat Shields, they honestly don't really get anything done. So now you see he's also starting up Hellions. Now let's see what he does here. He's making, basically making Marauder Hellion. I wonder what the Hellions are for. I think this could definitely be a counter-attack mechanic. Try to get some damage done. Definitely prioritizing unit production over making a starport at this point. And here you can see the Marauder here is actually the, the unit scaring everything away. Because the Marauder honestly kills everything here pretty easily. Adepts don't really do damage uh, against Marauders as you can see. And without these Marauders, I think Zaun would have been able to camp the low ground a bit more. Deny a lot of that mining. But now, Clem is totally fine. Worker count is the same. There's no tech yet for the Protoss. Twilight is about to finish. And Clem is in a fine spot. Um, I think it's not just the Marauders that were to play here. But also keep in mind that he did make those three Marines before making an add-on. So he actually had enough unit to scare the first unit away. Put units into the bunker, etc. Now how many Marauders did he make? He made three Marauders and I believe he made two Hellions. He's going to fly over the factory on the tech lab. Also important to know, I didn't notice this before, is that he was actually doing this off of one gas. So if you see his minerals and his gas count, it's pretty tight. If he made that second gas earlier, he actually would have been in money trouble. Now he sees the twilight. And here what I find super interesting is the follow-up. Because like you, everyone can do this part, like maybe not the micro, but I mean you can make the transition to Marauders. You can do everything right. But the follow-up tends to feel horribly awkward a lot of times. So Clem is actually making single tanks. Uh, he did obviously see that there was a Chrono boosting Twilight on the other side. With the SCV scout that he saved from the beginning, by the way. And Helen is still on the edge of the map to scout. Now it is 1 HP. And Clem is playing is very safe. So it seems like Clem is very happy with his proxy gate defense. He feels like he's in a good spot. Um, which means he can drop down safety turrets. Normally against Protoss, you don't really want to drop defenses down that you don't need. It's very expensive. You want to keep up your momentum. But Clem is happy enough with his hold that he drops down the safety turret. Obviously, like I always say, if you're anywhere near the Protoss in worker count, you're pretty good. Also notice he, he just cancelled the missile turret after scouting the turret. Like, that's a level of adaptation most people won't do. I imagine normally you guys would just finish the turret, so would I. 
But Clem, keen on saving those 75 minerals, decides to cancel that turret. Obviously, if he, if he went for the T drop with extra gates, he would not be able to afford a third base that fast. It's possible that it was down already, but that one was pretty much completed. And that led Clem to believe that this was just a standard blink follow up. Now he's on three barracks. Now, honestly, I feel like he does a little bit of magic, you know? Like the add ons flying around and all that. I actually felt like he was. Uh, there was a little bit of magic going on there. Seems to perfectly know which add ons to swap and when. Also, making. Look at the production value. He's making three reactors right now. You don't see that very often. Third TC going down. Actually, this production looks very much like a late game TVP where he's only making Marauders. Uh, in this case, it's because he doesn't have the reactor finished yet. There we go. But normally, that's what you see in the late game from really good late game turns like Maru, where they just make quality units and not necessarily the fodder in the Marines. Fourth and fifth barracks about to go down. Pretty consistently making SCVs, actually. Normally, people stop at 47. Clem seems to want to play a little bit more macro heavy, so he's actually already up at 50 SCVs. Salvage is the bunker. I feel like a lot of these moves that players like Clem do are just like... They're just braver than the rest of us, you know. Like, he, he cancels the missile turret instantly uh, when he feels like it's not the T-drop. He cancels the bunker instantly when he thinks he's okay. Doesn't have stim, doesn't have combat shield, doesn't have plus one. Still salvages the bunkers because he thinks it's fine. Uh, honestly, shows a very elite level of game sense here. Now, what's the next move? Okay, he's actually going to go for a mind drop. Very interesting. Normally, I recommend mind drops when... You have a lot of them left over in the macro game and you can't you know the opponent has like colossus for example or disruptors you can't pick them up with your army clem puts on pressure with a very small amount of units no medivax and then uses the mines instantly to drop very cool move, very clem style actually clem definitely likes to get as much damage done as he can early on pretty sure that tank is stuck actually uh, that would have to walk around to the mineral line now let's see how clem is gonna do this attack Obviously, Zhao is on a decent army, is on a decent army supply. I think usually what you want to do is try to make contact with your main army. Um, and as soon as you have contact, you can go in with the mind drop. Now, Clem is just going to go right away. He actually stimmed forward his main army so he could go in. Did you guys see that there? And that means the drop went in. You see, eight probes going down. But normally, if you just drop in there, it doesn't happen. What Clem did is he stimmed forward his army, tried to make contact. Zhao saw the contact, focused on his main army, lost eight probes to the winning run drop at the same time. And honestly, that's just the difference between the multitasking. If you did not do that main attack force, Stim, at the same time, uh, they probably just pull away the probes and you don't get any damage done. But Clem always really good at finding damage. Now, his opponent's making Colossus. He hasn't decided to drop down a Ghost Academy or any Vikings yet. So I'm curious what his next move is going to be as well. I feel like if Clem gets an advantage... More than any other Terran in the world, he makes the game look pretty easy a lot of the times. Like, if he gets ahead, he will keep finding damage and then he kills them at some point. But if I took over this game in this position, I honestly wouldn't feel that fantastic about it. Like, we're up a little bit of supply, but the opponent has Colossus. Uh, the upgrades are the same. Like, to me, this feels like a normal game. But I feel like this is the kind of game where Clem uh, makes it look pretty easy at some point. And I want to see from his POV how he does that. I think his drop ran across a few zealots there, indeed. You see how fast he is? Uh, just moving away all the units at the same time. If you guys are asking me, like, well, I don't have 500 APM, how do I do this? The way you do this usually is... Let me just go off his POV for a second. The way you do that usually is that you just keep your army here instead of actually actively attacking, if that makes sense. And then when you have the opportunity, you stim in. Rather than try to literally do the things at the same time like Clem is doing. Like pretty much like this, he sent away the drop, the drop is safe, and then he moved in with the attack. This strategic way of doing it is exactly how you should do it if you do not have 500 APM or magic hands uh, like Clem does. Now you see, you see exactly what I mean, I was talking about it. This game looked normal, right now, the game suddenly looks insane for Clem. He's 40, uh, 40 supply up, 11 more SCVs, 4 CC on the way, double upgrades going down. And just like that, a few simple moves honestly. Mind drop in the main. How many workers did I get? Six kills apparently. Very well done by Clem. And now the Ghost Academy is going down. I feel like Clem gets the Ghost Academy and stuff a little bit later than Terrence would usually do. And that is honestly not something I would recommend. Unless you're also a literal multitasking god. But since I don't think anyone is as good as Clem uh, in, in this specific skill set of the game. I'd probably recommend just dropping down your Ghost Academy and your Vikings a little bit faster. Or maybe not your Vikings but at least your Ghost Academy. 
Also, I'm very surprised he actually does not have a turret in the third base. I, w I wonder if this is the kind of thing where Clem gets some edges uh, compared to other turrets. Like, I would not leave my third base without a without a turret. Like, there are so many filthy Protoss players out there, to be honest, that will literally just drop a DT shine at a random moment in the game. And I uh, do not want to have to deal with that without a turret. And let's see how he's going to move this army around. He's getting his ghost and his extra barracks. You can see there he had the camera hotkey at his rally. I know it moved very fast, but that's how he was able to grab these guys so fast. Only lost a few SCVs to it at the same time, trading a little zealots. Getting his second starport as well. Preparing for the late game, going for that liberator transition. Now, judging by how this game is going so far, I don't think he is going to need the liberators. Uh, like I said, knowing Clem, he is probably going to kill him very soon. Because that's just Clem things. Um, this is actually the kind of position where I would still be scared. It's like... He's ahead, but there are usually defensive batteries, there are disruptors and stuff out. Uh, or at least I see him make a few in the production tab, I don't know if there's many out yet. Oh, yeah, okay. Relatable content, guys! Woo! It's not all magic, guys. Relatable content spotted. Um, <laughs> Tutu is about to finish for Clem, though, and I feel like when he gets 2-2 against just plus one, he should definitely be able to take a good enough fight to win out there. Now, he also does not have a third in his planetary fortress base. I... I, I kind of admire it that he's taking every edge he can. Like, if you look at his minerals and his gas, very often he cannot even really afford turrets. Like, he will legit drop below 100-100 in a macro game, which is insane. But still, going that long without turrets, I'd be very scared um, of losing two DTs. But yeah, if you're fast enough, if you save a few scans here and there, you can definitely do that. This mind drop has been alive for the entire game, no? How many kills are on these? Four? Four and four. It's actually not that crazy. But I guess it uh, really uh, adds up over time. And I see Clem has two armies here. One on the left, one on the right side. Both posturing. And it's funny because Clem is honestly winning the game just by standing here. Like, Zaun does not have a fourth base, guys. Clem is literally a base up as Terran when it should be the opposite. Um, and honestly, just by being fast and standing there, Clem is winning this game. And now, Zaun has used all of his disruptors and Clem instantly goes in. There's a battery overcharge here, but like I said, Clem is three upgrades ahead. Um, even, like, I think Clem honestly would have won that fight if he kept fighting, but I would actually recommend to never fight into a battery overcharge. So what Clem did here, fantastic move. Actually goes in, snipes the disruptors perfectly. Uh, definitely Clem vibes going on. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely recommend never attacking into a battery overcharge because that's one way to lose a game where you're super far ahead. And it seems like that is going to be it for game number one. Let's move on to game number two. All right, so here we have game number two on Hardwire. As you can see on the minimap, Probe is moving out once again. Uh, kind of giving me the vibe that it's, it is actually going to be the exact same proxy. And the last time I skipped over it very fast. Uh, sorry if it was a little bit too fast. But Clem did have an insane move with his SCV that allowed him to see the Probe coming from an off direction. So I think what Zaun may have been thinking at this point is like, you know, he got lucky with the SCV scout, I'm not going to move my probe like that again, and then my proxy gate should be strong. Because obviously, uh, this was the global finals, Zaun had this prepared against Clem, thought it would work, and seems to be determined to make it work again uh, without, you know, giving up his position early on. Now, Clem is actually going to go with an earlier SCV scout this time. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to determine whether people just do different SCV scouts based on different maps or anything like that, or... Uh, you know, sometimes they could lose concentration, for example, forget to send their SCV for a bit. Last game, I have to admit, his SCV scout was a little bit late. Now he actually sent it very early. He did the 17 SCV scout here. I, I think this might actually be... I talked to this a lot with my students about this. Uh, and this might be the best SCV scout when you play a lot of cheesers. Because exactly like that, it allows you to see if the Nexus is down uh, before you plant your CC. So now Clem is just going to be able to plan his CC on the high ground. This build in general is the best possible SCP scout you can do against Proxy Gate. As you can see, you know, CC is on the high ground. He's already in a pretty good spot uh, to begin with. Now, what does he do after this? He starts a tech lab again. That's what I'm talking about, guys. This is the Clem move. He's going to go for the Marauders once again. Um, I wouldn't mind if he actually made a bunker as well. Because it is two gateways after all. There we go. He's going to make the bunker. And this is honestly... Textbook defending a proxy gate. He did the 17 SCV scout uh, against a guy who likes proxy gates. So he was able to make the CC on the high ground. Instantly gets a tech lab so he can make marauders which do way better than marines in this case. And now he's actually in a good enough spot. He's not going to lose SCVs at the home to the attack. 
uh, or get his natural delayed or anything like that. So now he actually did make the second gas faster. Now we can see Marauder is going to have a fantastic timer against the Stalker. Maybe with a magic grenade he can actually catch that. A little bit too good of a micro by Zaun. Though the Reaper can actually still get the job done, I think. Let's look at the micro. Is the micro perfect by Clem? Oh! Did you see that move? The perfect pullback timing. Doesn't let the Stalker get the last hit of it and instead gets him himself. That was honestly 10 out of 10 micro by Clem. That could not have been any better. Now let's see how he follows up from this. Obviously he's looking fantastic, but the follow-up is always the hardest part, I feel like. Um, oh. Okay, I mean, 10 out of 10 micro followed up by 1 out of 10 micro. Definitely averaging it out there. Uh, fair enough. Relatable content, right? So he makes a third Marauder. Probably, I, I imagine he's going to salvage that bunker at some point to add maybe a third barracks or something like that. Um, right now he's already making a second barracks. He's making a Marine. Gives me the vibe that he wants to start Stim, maybe. Oh, okay, he's going to cancel it. Probably put the factory on it and make a tank again, if I had to imagine. At least that's what he did last game. I also really would not... Oh, this is actually rough. Oh no, the lift timing on that. This is actually tragic. This is becoming more and more relatable as we speak. The perfect opener into the disaster. I feel like he's gonna lose at least 5 SUV studies if uh, Zaun target fires correctly. Let's see, 5 going down. Does he get the 6th one? Doesn't actually, exactly 5. I guess I'm a, a prophet of some sorts. So... Yeah, I feel like his entire good defense was pretty much negated by that. So now we can actually see how he follow up, follows up from that once again. Second barracks is already done. Last game he went for the starport and the eBay and then the third barracks, I believe. Complete. Surprisingly, he's making a cyclone this time. I think what's going on here is that typically, if Protoss players make a depth, it's more likely uh, that it's Stargate. And that's why the Cyclone comes out instead of the Siege Tank. Very possible there. Keep in mind the last game he actually had a, a bunch of Stalkers in front of the base. This game, however, he shaded in with a bunch of Adepts. And Zaun is actually, if you look at the production tab, he's going for a bit of a crazy build. He has, he went for DT and Forgate Link at the same time. Uh, which is definitely a little bit nuts. Let's see. Oh, it's actually going to make a third barracks this time. Okay, I actually like this. Uh, it's a different follow-up from last game. But I definitely do like it. Now, let's see what the Cyclone actually gets done here. Keep in mind, it is a pretty good scouting tool. He sees the third base, but honestly, this is very mind gamey because he has he has four gateways and he has Blink. Uh, and a DT Shrine. He still drops a third. Um, I guess this time, the third Nexus was not actually fast enough. So he does want to get that detection. But how does he deal with the forget blink without a bunker? I guess, honestly, he does have a really good amount of units. If you think about it, if you open with three Marauders, like you're looking at Clem's army here, this definitely feels a lot easier to defend forget blink than normal, because normally you just have a bunch of Marines. But now he actually has uh, a lot of Marauders with concussive shells already as well. Now let's see what the position looks like. Zaun actually proxied the... Yeah, I mean, Clem is never going to find that, to be honest. Maybe in like seven minutes or something. Um... At the same time, Clem added the third barracks, now adding the starport with the reactor. And this kind of feels like you just followed up from a three racks, right? Uh, getting a nice request for a 2v2 at the same time, very nice. That feel when you forget to put yourself in the busy mode. And I, I'm not sure what this move out is about, honestly. Um, I guess the third next... Honestly, the timings are very hard to read, right? Wait, does Clem see these DTs? No, I don't think he saw it. Now, the, okay, these TTs are very scary. They could walk into the natural and cause a lot of havoc. Um, I'm actually... I felt my heartbeat when I saw those DTs. It's like, I, it, now, I'm, now I'm really feeling the relatable content, you know. Stim is not finished. Looks like he, he is gonna hit with Stim. Now, I see two Archons are being made on the production tab. If Clem knew there were two Archons on the way, he would get the hell out of there. He doesn't see them yet, though. Now he sees them. Uh, and he knows he needs to run. Probably gonna try to get a little bit of a trade with the Siege Tank. Uh, maybe kill one Archon, but Zaun Micron too well. And he's gonna back off. You can see Clem always tries to maximize, even try to target at Adept and stuff. Uh, very well done by both players, honestly. Good response by Zaun. He definitely chose the safe path of making Archons instead of countering with the DTs. And at the same time, Clem getting the maximum value out of his units. And now we're actually in the position where... I don't know. I feel like the game is pretty even here. I would even call it slightly favored for Zaun at this point. Clem's third is only just going down. And Zaun already has DT Blink on the way, which is probably the nightmare of every Terran at this point. So I hope Clem Senpai is gonna make this in a double Terran school, teach us how to deal with proxy gates and DT Blink at the same time. 
This turret at the front is very instrumental, by the way. Let me just give you guys a huge tip. You see Clem has the turret here. Uh, and he's rallying his barracks to it. This is what I always recommend. What happens then? If DTs run by, your units are already standing next to the point of detection. And DTs will be caught instantly. Uh, and they won't be able to just walk into your natural or main. This is just the surefire way to counter DTs. Uh, the third is still exposed, but your main and natural are at least safe. You can also make this turret here, for example. But... Clem already made that turret at the start against the DTs, right? Against an early DT attack. So he's just gonna use that one. Obviously good force wheels, but Clem does not mess up in the micro very often at all. Let's see what the traits look like. Silver is very slightly favored for Clem. Obviously not really a difference maker there. And same time he's going up to 5 barracks. No Ghost Academy or anything yet. Pretty much the same as last game uh, in that case. Normally I think this would be a pretty good time for a Ghost Academy. You get your armory ups, you know, start going towards 2-2. And then get the Ghost Academy as well. Clem typically stays a bit longer on... Um, oh, the DT blink. There we go. Instantly makes a third. You saw that in the middle of the fight. Uh, that's what APM can do for you guys. If you're so fast. You know, it, it looked like his army was disintegrating. But at the same time, he casually drops the third. And his third base secures that as well. Mind drop at the same time. And I feel like legitimately, if this was a slightly slower player, he could have lost the game instantly there. Uh, but Clem, being Clem, he doesn't. And he actually did get the fast ghost candy, by the way. That's awesome. Uh, did forget the armory for that, it looks like. Definitely does not want to miss out on 2-2 there. But getting the ghost academy fast, honestly, a really big plus. In case you guys didn't know, ghosts are also a really good counter to DTs. If you look at DTs, they have 80 shields and 40 health. You can see it in the bottom right. So one EMP basically re reduces the DT to just 40 health. So even one EMP honestly kind of dunks on DTs for the most part. Now Zaun is coming in to the natural with the DTs, but you see Clem has the rally on the turret, so there's nothing Zaun can do there. You see a lot of DTs. Very fast reaction there by Clem. Is she gonna snipe one of the DTs? Oh, it's really funny because DTs have their super glass cannon. So they have a, a really big punch at the start. When they blink in, they can one-shot your units, but after their blink is gone... They are pretty much like sitting ducks unless they're in your army. Like if you can stim EMP, you can kill all of them. So Clem with the fast reaction does lose a bunch of units, but actually catches four DTs after that. Um, so honestly kind of an even trade in the end. Zaun is now going up to the disruptors as well. And now with Ghost, this army looks really strong because Zaun was pretty much playing with a gateway army with DTs. And that pretty much just gets shut down by a lot of Ghost. Obviously you still need a, a sizable bio force as well. Let's see how the mines do. First mine misses, or well, is dodged by Zaun. Credit where credit is due. Now, Clem is obviously attacking well, defending this at the same time. Very Clem style. Let's see how the EMPs are. No EMPs gone off yet. He's actually going to decide to drop in the main instead. Very brave move. Casually drops an EMP with his reinforcement ghost at the same time. Let's see how this is going to go. Clem has a fantastic army here, guys. But if Zaun would group up, he would definitely be able to kill this. DT still going ham at home as well. See, he actually missed the EMP, or once again, it was dodged by Zaun at the same time. Now let's see how fast Clem can multitask this. Perfectly deals with the DTs there. Does lose a few units at the front. Um, but honestly, I think it was mostly empty medivacs that died there, honestly. And uh, Clem actually somehow takes a supply lead from it. I feel like, honestly, I don't think any other Terran in the world would have taken a supply lead from that. Because that looked so hard to deal with. 10 DTs at home. Bigger army in his main than you had in his main. And uh, yeah. Clem honestly makes it work. He is behind in SCVs now, but the supply doesn't lie. He's up 25 army supply at this point. His upgrades are a little bit late. Like I said, he did skip on his armory for a bit. But honestly, the ghost may have even made that worth it. Without the ghost, those DTs would have been very hard to deal with. Like I said, an EMP actually removes, you know, 66% of a DT's health instantly, uh, which is huge. It's kind of similar to Archons if you think about it. EMP dunks on pretty much both DTs and Archons. Now what surprises me is that Clem is actually going for Liberators before getting like plus one attack. I always give the rule. Liberators are insane when you get plus two. And without plus two, they're honestly kind of mediocre. Okay, how did he lose a few units there? That's illegal. Um, cool move by Zaun. Probably has an Observer spawning it or maybe a DT or something like that. He's even going to catch a Disruptor for it. Somehow this turned into a good trade for Clem once again. That's just the speed. These are in that base though, but the mines? Wait, did the mines just kill all of them? How? Why are my widow mines not this good? What the hell, man? Um, 
Anyway, just want to explain the Liberator rule real quick with the plus two. If you have plus two on your Liberators, they one-shot Stalkers or one or they two-shot Stalkers or one-shot with EMP. If you don't have plus two, they three-shot Stalkers and two with EMP. So it actually can save you literally half the shots. Plus two makes Liberators insane. Without plus two, they're not so good. But Clem did decide to make them earlier. Um, I wonder... He probably just has enough medevacs. He has seven medevacs, wants to spend this money. And that's why he's deciding to get Lips. Now, there's only two disruptors. Zaun is being very brave, I have to be honest. Um, but only two disruptors. Clem's army looks so much better right now. Clem, uh, Zaun is actually going in here. But Clem's army is honestly insane. Liberators are not even necessary. They're just there for the victory dance, I suppose. Both the Immortals are going to die here as well. That disruptor is going to get caught. The Colossus is going to get caught. And I think with one swift move, Clem may have just won the game. Um, Clem has been playing insane, but honestly, this was more of a mistake on Zaun's part. Huge blunder there to move out. And if Zaun survives this army at this point, I can't really see it happen. Unless Clem runs out of scans and misses a few EMPs on DTs or something like this. The one case where the battery overcharge isn't enough, guys. Uh, I, I would never say that, but in this case, it actually wasn't enough. And looks like Clem is going to take the 2-0. Obviously, EMP is himself there to scan the DTs. And this was an awesome TVP clinic by Clem. Showing how to deal with the blink DTs, which is honestly by having 500 APM in this case. And dunked on the proxy gate as well. Hope you guys enjoyed the Clems Terran School. Don't forget to sub and like. And I'll see you guys next time. Adios.